Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. Now, not too long ago, I made a pretty cool lumber mill, sawmill style creation. I have it welded over here off of the ground. Now, the way the sawmill worked was I would take the trees that I would chop down, I would use my weld tool and weld them up to the plate, but there's been an update, and you can no longer weld trees or rocks to anything. Now, I wasn't sure if that was intentional or not. I was kind of skeptical. I did try it out, and it worked really well, but like I said, the devs have since patched it out, so that means this sawmill isn't totally useless. I might be able to convert this into like a tree grabbing crane system, but realistically that is not a practical thing to do in survival. And I feel like I don't even need this truck to be a saw style truck anymore. So I'm going to be reverting all of that. I think I'm going to take all of the resources from the sawmill and put them towards some other creations. Now, as for the mining vehicle that we're going to be taking a look at, I had a video where I called it, this is the mining vehicle's final form. Now, that is not true anymore. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to change this to something that makes a little more sense. There we go. Now, I don't even think this is safe to say that this would be the final form, but we're gonna take a look at that in a second because I do still want to find a backpack. We've got three common boxes that we are gonna open up, so let's see what the first one is. Oh, it's just another t-shirt. Skip the t-shirt. And you know, I, I saw Khan's video and I think he's struggling to find pants. now. He's going around pantless, which I mean is kind of weird, you know, you do have some pants available, but I mean, that's all right. Now, oh, we've got our first backpack, and of course it is the farmer's sack. That's, uh, it's not the most exciting backpack, I'm not gonna lie, but we're gonna take a look at it here. I have the crazy harness, and attached to that sci-fi looking harness is just a boring burlap sack. Now, people have said that you can only get, uh, backpacks from the epic and rare a garment boxes, but clearly that is not the case. Now, I don't want to be greedy, but a second backpack that's better than this one, you know, that'd be pretty sweet right about now. Oh, wait, what is that? What the heck is that? It's not a backpack, is it? Oh my god, it is a backpack! It's the backpack to the harness! I can't believe it! We, not only did we get a second backpack, I called the second backpack, and it's the one that goes with this harness. Okay, uh, maybe it's not the one that goes with this harness, but it really looks like it. We finally did it. This is awesome. So it's almost gonna be nighttime, so I'm gonna take this time right now to show you guys all of the changes that I have made to this creation up to this point and why I did certain things. And then I'm gonna wait till the morning so I can show you all of it in action by chopping trees down and, uh, you know, gathering some rocks. So the first thing you're gonna notice is I doubled the drill count. So I have four on this side and four on this side as well. And that just gives me more vertical grasp of the rocks once they're crushed. So I find they stand up and they actually serve a second purpose that we will see tomorrow morning. Now I have saw blades on this. I was using the large truck over there, like I said earlier, for chopping trees down, but it's not necessary anymore because I'm not welding anything. And so this is a great tool for chopping down any size tree, even the giant trees, the biggest ones that we can chop down, this thing is pretty good for it. So this is what it looks like when I'm controlling the drills. I still have that piston action. Now I think I might make some changes to this vehicle at night. I think I'm gonna convert those pistons into suspension pieces and have them connect together a different way maybe. And right now I have it attached to a button where it does this and that's kind of annoying. I, I might have to make some changes because now I can turn my drills over to them their side like this and this is used to get the the uh, the rocks that are down on the ground they're kind of difficult to grab uh, i have the option though to lift these up like this now the thing is when i press one you can see the pistons kind of just push everything out on a bit of an angle and i want things to be a little flatter now if i make some changes to the uh, pistons and swap them over for suspension i have a feeling that maybe I'll be able to press down on things and have all of the uh, the drill bits extend at different lengths. And the reason why I want to switch the one key to a switch, <laughs> no no play on words there intended, but I want to switch the switch to a switch because 
Right now, if I want to, like, hold these up like this, I have to constantly hold down one. And if I let go of one, then they go back into their original position. So turning those pistons into suspension is going to stop that. And turning this button into a switch will also make it a little easier to use. Now, there is another thing that I added. You might have noticed this really weird chair just off to the side of my vehicle. Now, this is actually because... When you're going around in the wilderness, sometimes you end up with, like, rock formations and stuff that are really large, they're really tall, and it's difficult to access things like chests on the top of them, or also the, uh, the beehives that you see for the, uh, the beeswax there. Now, this is a chair that I added to the vehicle just so I can go up to high places. Now, this is not, you know, this is not the tallest thing, there is definitely things that are higher than just this. Like, even just look at the mechanic shop there. Uh, but I think this is going to be really good for getting to beeswax that's really high up and those chests. Now, before it turns into nighttime, I've actually heard people talk about the fact that there's a golden chest on the top of the mechanic shop. And I've read these comments, I've seen them pop up a few times, and I just didn't know what to believe. I, I've never checked, mainly because I, I didn't believe people who were saying it but I guess now is a good time to finally see if there is a golden chest on the mechanic shop okay we're here let's see nothing around here nothing in that side yeah I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking people were lying to me but like you know people wouldn't go on the internet and lie would they all right all right so it's nighttime I'm going to head back into my shop here. I'm going to make the uh, minor adjustments to this thing, and hopefully it's going to see some good improvement. And then once the morning comes, we're going to chop some trees down, we're going to mine some rocks, and we're going to go to some high places. All right, so it is now back to the morning, bright and early. As you can see, I've got some changes now. I have the suspension pieces here instead of the pistons, and it's kind of funny. I had one of them that was a level 3, so I just, I was so compelled. I had to use the component kits to upgrade all of them to level 3, just so that they would at least look the same. But I'm really happy with all of that. Now, some of the minor changes that I did make, aside from the uh, suspension there, is I converted the, uh, the arms to move on switches now instead of buttons. So when I press 6, you can see these close in. And they close in a little bit more than before as well. And that's because when they're rotated over like so, and I close them in just like that, uh, you can see that they are way closer. I had a big gap in the middle here. Now that gap is way tighter. It should be a little bit better. And you can see the uh, suspension now compresses when I press down against the ground. So hopefully that's going to give us some more like ground contact with the stone. Now I know some people are probably going to be thinking, Oh, Moonbow, you said you don't use glitches and then you used the welding and now it's gone so see what you get and you know what if if you want to rub it in a little bit more you know I I didn't know if it was intentional or not I I thought maybe it might be but I ended up making a ridiculous amount of drills I have let's see I have eight of them attached to my trailer now these are like a deterrent for uh, the hay bots and the uh, the greenies but I have even more Look, I have a wall of drills here. I think I have drills in some of the chests inside. I spent so many resources on drills because I was going to make a rock crusher. And I was going to weld the rocks, but that's not the case anymore. So there you go. Have a laugh at my expense. I wasted a lot of time and effort on those drills, but that's alright. I'm still loving this game and I think I'll still find a use for those drills eventually. But let's hop into our vehicle here. And I guess we're going to start with a tree first. Let's find one of the giant trees. Okay, there's a huge tree right here. I can only hope that it just doesn't fall into the water. If it falls into the water, well, then this is just not going to work out. So I've got those two saw blades on the front, though. We're going to bring it right up to the tree. We just got to turn it on a little bit. There we go. The tree's falling. Okay, it's falling right for us. Just back up. Back up. Oh, it... Whoa. It got stuck on the birch. Okay, there it goes. It's going down. Okay, perfect. So before, I would have just welded this maybe in two pieces because it is so big. But these two saw blades, that's all you need. 
And it's actually quite amazing because I have the function on this where the arms close like that, right? And when I do that, it actually stabilizes the tree in front of me. So I can turn these saws on, and then all I need to do is use my arms here with the drill bits, and I can just hold them in place and just drive directly into the tree. There we go. So those four pieces are broken. And now I can basically just keep driving in a straight line, you know, I'm just kind of grabbing on and letting go of the tree as I need to. And it's just, it's fast. And I feel like this is probably faster than the, uh, the sawmill ever would have been. And so as it starts to get kind of laggy, and I've noticed that the suspension seems to be laggier than the pistons, uh, but if it starts to get laggy, we just gotta back up, and then I just need to extend our resource collector just like so. And we'll scoop up these pieces of wood right here. And it's just that easy. So, I mean, it was fun using the, uh, the sawmill, you know, and using the truck. Uh, but I know a lot of people thought it was kind of a, a cheating thing to do, and I didn't really, I didn't really disagree necessarily. Alright, one final big chunk. And yeah, so I just, I think my favorite part about the changes that I've made to this is the fact that I'm getting so much usage out of these drill arms now. I'm able to stabilize these trees, and I feel like it is a pretty fast way. Um, there's probably, you know, more efficient wood mining vehicles out there, but I'm really happy with the results. And I suppose, you know, it's, it's a lot of evolution with this build and trying to find different ways to make it a little bit better each time I make those changes, and this may or may not be the final form, I, I can't say for sure. So there we go, that was one giant tree, took no time at all. Now, I am gonna go and hunt down a, a single rock structure, I'm not gonna try and, you know, go crazy with it like in the last video where I spent like two days mining rocks, we're just gonna find one single rock structure and we're gonna see what it's like to mine with that now. Alright, so I think I found probably like the best mineable rock formation in the game. All of the other ones I've ever seen are like on crazy hills, or there's just obscure things that are in the way, but this one is almost on flat land. I can hardly believe it. So this should be a good chance to test out our changes to the mining vehicle here, so I guess let's just uh... Give this a shot. Okay, wow. Okay, starting off really strong. All I need to do is drive in a straight line, and look at this. Wow, the extra drill bits are helping. Let's squeeze it in. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. They're doing some weird things right now. Okay, something weird just happened. Now, before I got to this rock formation, I was driving, and my wheel, it fell off randomly. Like, it, I was just driving along, and next thing you know, my wheel was underneath my car, and I started to, like, get all stuttered. And now this is not connected to a, a controller anymore. It just disconnected itself somehow. Anyway, that's fixed now. Some weird stuff happening to my game, it seems like. Uh, but let's try this again. So yeah, I was gonna try and just raise these up and maybe drive in a straight line like this. And let's see what that does. It's touching the rocks. I can see the smoke. Okay, there's one broken. And there's another one broken. So that seems to work pretty well. Now, what happens if we just drive this straight at the rocks all at once. Okay, it's like washing them. There we go. The most intense scrub ever. Now, I find the most satisfying thing is watching all of the suspension pieces work independently as you're moving around and crushing things. Like, look at that. This one is so much higher than the other one, but why isn't it breaking? Look at this. Why isn't it breaking that rock? I don't understand these drill bits. I swear the consistency in these drill bits is non-existent. But either way, it seems like it's a pretty good system. Um, it definitely makes it so that you don't have to constantly get out of your vehicle, uh, which was kind of like the whole goal in this, because now, just like doing the tree, 
I can bring our resource collector out here like so. And it still fits in between somehow. You can see it, it pushes those drill bits out of the way. But it still kind of fits. And we're able to just grab all that stuff and then bring it right back up again. Now one thing I find with mining is as the rocks on the ground start to thin out, the whole process really slows down. So I feel like it's almost like it's best for me to just attack these rocks as much as I can and get as many of the big chunks out at once. Or even just trying to get them all refined, or not refined, sorry, but like broken down into their smallest pieces while they're still standing. Because when you have to start driving around and angling your drill bits down, I find that's when stuff starts to get really painfully slow. Now that seemed to work way better because I think, yeah, all of those just got totally crushed. Okay, that was the fastest yet. So I'm going to try and just break off this entire chunk now. Let's see if we can't do this in one big squeeze. Oh, man. This is crazy. Oh, whoa! What? Was that a rock in a rock? That's double... That's double the minerals that I was expecting out of this. Okay, and there's the full-size one. Okay, wow. This does work really well. Like, look at this. Just latching on to one of these big pieces like this. And just watch. You can see them all standing up. And they just... They can't really fall over. I mean, okay, some of them are falling over, but a lot of them are still stuck in between those drill bits, and the ones that are stuck, they're, like, guaranteed to get broken down into the, uh, the mineral rods that we can put into the containers. Alright, now this looks like a good opportunity to test the, uh, the ground scrubbing, because these are all down on the flat ground now. Uh, so let me see, can I, can I remember my buttons here? I think it's five, yes, and six is gonna bring them together. There we go. And then seven to turn it on. And now I'm just gonna lift them up. Like so. Let's see what this is like. Oh, wow. I think this is working. Drop it down. Oh, yeah, look at that. That did a really good job there. Yeah, that was that was really smooth. I think it, it's definitely very beneficial to have all of your rocks down on the flat ground. And like the fact that most of the rock formations in this game are up on some weird little hill. It's, it's kind of frustrating because they've made it a little more difficult to grab the resources. Now, I feel like the slippery wheels is something that really doesn't lend well to the fact that all of the minerals are up on those hills, though. Uh, because I find the biggest challenge for me is having my vehicle stay lined up with the minerals. Because if I'm on a hill, I just start sliding away, and then I try and turn, but I can't turn because I'm still sliding. So we're just gonna leave those minerals there, I'll gather them at a different time, you know, nothing's more exciting than watching people grind out materials in survival. Uh, so we're gonna head over to this building here so we can try out our Extendomatic seat. Now, I haven't really used this side seat in any, like, really practical way or anything like that. Uh, and it's really, it's probably best suited for a different vehicle, because this is more of like a mining vehicle. Uh, but I figured it might be beneficial to have something like this, uh-oh, on my vehicle. Now, I guess it's really not good if it's not on flat land, but I can bring the seat back down. Yeah, you can see the car is is definitely on a slope, but why am I... See, I'm not falling off right now. Maybe I just did it too quickly. Let's go up. Wait for a moment, and then hop out. Okay, yeah, I just, I went a little too fast. So yeah, look, it's like a, it's like a little bit of a shortcut to get up onto the building, and I can loot everything, and then once I go up to the top of the building, I can just come back down and uh, hop back into the seat. So, uh, why don't I do that? Okay, never mind. I already looted this building, and I guess it hasn't respawned yet. There's, there's no enemies to be found. There's no chests anywhere, so I think I've got the hint, but let's do the, uh, the test run anyway, there's the seat, we hop into it, and then it just brings us right back down to our vehicle. Hey, I think it's pretty cool. Oh, see, now this looks like a good spot to do one final quick test with the seat. We've got the stairwell right here. Okay, hold on. Got some hay bots to destroy first. There we go. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, I think this is a good spot to try the seat out. We're just going to drive up a little bit closer. Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. And now let's see what it's like to just use the seat here at this building. Ooh, it brings us right here. Now, can I make this jump? I made the jump! Look at that! That's so cool! It's such a sneaky way up to the building so fast. So you can just like, you know, do your looting, grab your component kits, and then once you are done with the whole building, you just gotta come back to this spot right here and hop back into the seat. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not the most practical thing, but it's just, it, it reminds me of just like a very gizmo gadget style creation. And, you know, sometimes things don't have to be 100% practical to have fun with them. So that is the all-in-one resource collector. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thanks for all of the amazing feedback as well on this build. Uh, you guys have definitely helped make it as awesome as it is. Uh, if you guys do enjoy the build or if you guys did enjoy the video, then make sure you hit that like button. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments as well. And if you want to tune in for some more Endless Scrap Mechanic and more Scrap Mechanic Survival, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe even turn on your notifications so you can get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, so thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one. So bye for now.